What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of the Off the Ball Podcast with me, your host, Chris LeBron. And on today's show, I got another great installment of my uh, NBA draft profiles. And, you know, this is something I'm looking forward to that I've been doing. And, and you know, we're going to get right into it. This is the second installment of it. And on today's show, we got someone who who is just a professional bucket getter, you know, just to say the least, man. This guy just uh, absolutely tore it up in the MAC conference. So my guest today is Northern Illinois' all-time leading scorer, over 2,000 points, the first one in his school to ever to get 2,000 points. I got Eugene German. What's going on, Eugene? What's going on? Thanks for having me. No doubt, man. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, you, you had a pretty, pretty tremendous career at Northern Illinois. I mean, obviously, you know, all-time leading scorer, you know, to that first guy to 2,000 points. Just talk to me about this this whole journey from, you know, from being a freshman to senior year and just, you know, all the accolades. You you know, also first team all, all MAC. You know, you got a lot of accolades, you know, that you've been able to to uh, to, to collect over these four years. Just talk about, you know, your, your – <clears throat> Yeah, man, things started off really slow for me uh, my freshman year. I definitely had to adapt to uh, being a college basketball player. You know, it was definitely uh, a lot of obstacles I had to go through. And, you know, um, yeah, just a lot of obstacles I had to go through and a lot of work I had to put in. <clears throat> you know, you know, come on, you know, coming in, you know, leading the state and scoring and things like that. You know, I, you know, I was coming in with, along with a huge mindset of, like, being a star player and things like that. But I definitely, you know, had to humble myself and, you know, put in some work for me to um, separate myself and have a, a fantastic career that I had. Yes. Yeah, so, so what's the biggest, what was the biggest adjustment from going, like you said, being the leading scorer in the state, right? You were the leading scorer in the state of Indiana to yeah. going to, to Northern Illinois and, you know, not getting, not being the, the guy right away, you know, how big of an adjustment is that from being the guy until now, all right, now you got to wait. You know, you're not playing your minutes. You're not be able to, to do the things you like to do in high school. What's the biggest adjustment from that? Oh, man. um, Just, you know, bigger players and, you know, uh, learning the system and, you know, learning uh, your uh, co- uh, your uh, coaches, different coaches' styles and, you know, things like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, that was just a huge adjustment, you know, being in a weight room and, you know, being on your own, you know, in college, you know, uh, you know, in high school, you know, you got your parents all on your side, you know, but when you in college, you know, you all by yourself and you got to uh, have have integrity and do things, you know, uh, just do or just do the right thing when no one's watching. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. So was it, so what was the process of, you know, picking a school, but did you have multiple schools or was it always Northern Illinois from the jump? Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I get asked this question a lot. You know, uh, this what makes my story feel so much, you know, uh, sounds uh, so much better. You know, uh, coming out of high school, you know, I only had one offer, you know, and that was to NIU. So, you know, people, uh, you know, was really just in shock of uh, me just having uh, one offer and things like that. So, yeah, man, you know, like, you know, once Northern Illinois offered me, you know, I jumped on it right away because I didn't know if I was going to get another offer. I didn't want to yeah. lose the offer. So I jumped on it right away, and I made the best of the, uh, the best of my uh, decision I made. That's awesome, man. Definitely made the best of it. And you, like you said, you had a tremendous career at NIU. So talk about your freshman year. You know, obviously you're not getting the run, you know, the minutes that you're used to. And then you make the jump from your sophomore year, and you're averaging over 20 now. So what did you think you made – what adjustments did you make to your game from freshman year to sophomore year and all the way to, because you average you average 20 each year from sophomore, you know, junior, senior year, you know. So what was the biggest adjustment from your freshman year to, to you know, to your sophomore and, and from there on? Oh, man, I just had to get better, man. I just had to get better. You know, I was coming in, you know, um, I was just thinking scoring, scoring, you know. But, you know, again, I had to learn a system. I had to you know, get prepared, you know, it was a lot I went through my freshman year. I was in a very dark place. I wanted to transfer and, uh, and, uh, you know, I, you know, I didn't believe in my coaches and things like that, you know, but, you know, when I started believing in them and things like that, you know, uh, my, uh, you know, my just career just took off, you know, from there. Yeah. So I, I, I had this like similar conversation I had with, uh, the, the last guy I talked to was Sasu from uh, IFIU and he had sort of, sort of that similar, like he's struggling his freshman year and he doesn't know if this is the right fit. Did you have any of those, 
doubts in your head that maybe, you know, if, you know, maybe, you know, uh, Northern Illinois is just not the right spot for me and maybe I should think about transferring or was it like, all right, you know what, it, it, it's, you know, it might be bumpy right now, but, you know, I'll just, I just got to fight through this and, and eventually my time will come. Absolutely, man. I was thinking about transferring, you know, I was like, you know, it's just somehow, you know, it, um, it's just no way a player like me, you know, um, is on a bench and not getting the minutes I deserve. So, you know, um, you know, that's definitely something I had to, you know, get get over and adjust to. But, you know, as I start, you know, playing and start believing in the system and watching a lot more film and believing in my coaches, you know, my uh, career, uh, career just took off from there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that's awesome that you stuck with it and just, you know, kept grinding and, you know, eventually, you know, you started just absolutely killing this stuff. So, you know, that, that just shows, you know, your hard work and stuff, you know, that uh, it, it paid off, which is which is tremendous, you know. So, you know, obviously, you know, I talked about the accolades, but the one, you know, major accolade you have is you're the all-time leading scorer <laughs> in school history. Just – just talk about that, like that moment. How uh, you know what was going? Did you know that when you got it that you that you broke the record? Was it was it informed to you by teammates or coaches? Just talk about that whole feeling of you know of of achieving that goal. Yeah, so uh, you know they, uh, you know my teammates and coaches was making a big deal out of it. Um, make making a big deal out of it the whole day. You know, saying you know I needed like uh, I think it was eighteen points to you know become the all time leading scorer that night. So. You know, just going into the game, I knew I needed 18, you know, but I still just focus on winning the game and, you know, just, you know, continue to lead us to a, a Mac West championship. So, you know, as things was going on, you know, I struggled in the uh, in the, uh, first, um, in the first half. People thought I probably wasn't going to get it. But, you know, um, you know, I just turned up the second half, just got it, uh, you know, got a couple steals, got a couple dunks and, you know, and one, and then next thing you know, you know, I made the layup to uh, become the all-time lead scorer. And, you know, it was just an amazing feeling. Again, just like, you know, just having one offer out of high school. And, yeah. you, know, people, you, know, people, you know, people not believing in me and going to averaging 23 years in a row. I'm like, you know, That's I only crazy, have – <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm like, you know, I only got one offer. Like, you telling me y'all can't play for y'all's school? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, man. So, it was just an amazing feeling, man. So – Definitely amazing feeling. I mean, and that's just the inspiration for others who, who you know, because I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure you know guys, and there's a whole bunch of you know hoopers out there that, you know, you know, are in that same boat where you know they only get one offer, or they might not get, and you know they might get discouraged and stuff. And, and your story it can kind of motivate guys to you know keep grinding, and you know eventually with all the work they can get to that level because you know. It, you're you're uh you're the all-time leading scorer you, you average 30 i mean you average 20 points a game three years you know your sophomore junior senior year you know your first team all mac you know that that's a that your story alone is, is going to inspire a lot of people so i mean that's just tremendous everything you were able to accomplish i mean kudos to you man because you know there's a lot of people who would just would try to give up you know after, especially that freshman year where you're not you're not you know mm -hmm. you come from doing your thing in high school like we said before and and, and that freshman year not yeah and you know, going to doing what you do, that that's really uh, I really commend you on that, and that's tremendous. Yes, so, sir. So, how did you deal with obviously, you know, obviously, you know, you know, sports came to a halt with with the whole COVID nineteen stuff, and were you guys in the tournament? Were you guys in the in the conference tournament? And you know, when did you when did you get the notice that you know it's over? And then, like, obviously, you're a senior, and you worked your whole career to you know get an opportunity to play in the big dance, you know, in the NSA tournament, you know, what was that, how, what was the feeling around with you and, and your whole team? Yeah, so, man, it was like, man, it was just a devastating feeling, man, you know, just like we put in so much work into this and then, you know, uh, you know, we, you know, we, we was the co-West champions, you know, yeah. for our side. So, you know, so we got a buy. So we sitting back and we watching Miami, you know, or but um, and, uh, Buffalo play, seeing which one we go play next. You know, we end up, you know, figuring out that we playing Miami. And man, it, you know, man, you know, we was, you know, it, man, it was just a tough feeling for us, man, because we felt like we was going to go win it all, man. So, you know, it was, you know, it was, you know, it was definitely a tough feeling for us. Yeah, and especially being a senior and knowing that your, your career is over and you won't even get an opportunity. You know, I mean, I'm sure that was just devastating to know that 
you know, Absolutely. this is how my college career ends. This is obviously that's not how anyone wants to end their career, you know, off what happened. But you know, it, you know, you still had a tremendous career, which you know, uh, I'm sure you're, you're you're very proud of that. So, you know, how, how are you handling the whole draft process right now? Obviously, it's tough with with uh, you know not being able to meet with teams or, or you know be able to go to, to you know workouts and stuff. How are you how are you preparing? you know, and getting, you know, your representation, how are they getting, you know, stuff out to teams and making sure that, you know, you keep your name there? Um, my, uh, so, you know, my agency, you know, my agent, you know, they basically, you know, just sending out my best film and, you know, uh, my accolades that I achieve and, you know, uh, just, you know, just putting the word for me, you know, um, mm-hmm. so I'm just staying prepared. I'm just working out, you know, Monday through Friday, you know, staying focused and, you know, continue to just better my craft. So, yeah, man, I'm definitely staying prepared on my agents. Uh, they put in the work for me, too. Have you heard from teams? Yeah, uh, I heard from – Um, I mean, well, well, I didn't hear from myself, but my agent, you know, he uh, told me that he's hearing from uh, the Celtics, the Bulls, the Mavericks, um, the Phoenix Suns, the Bucks, and uh, it's one other team. I forgot what other team it was that's nice. Got some nice couple teams right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, have they give you a, like a you know? Has there been any you know talk about where you could possibly land as far as draft night? Have they give you a you know work round or you know anything like that? No, they ain't giving me uh that yet. Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not in no mock drafts or nothing right now. You know, so mm-hmm. you know I gotta have the uh, the harder route. You yeah. know, man. So, you know, that's why I needed, like, the NBA workouts and things like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, you know, uh, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> you, you've you've been here before, you know, as far as, the, you know, taking the tough route. So, this, this, is, some, this is something I'm sure you, you're definitely going to be prepared for as far as, you know, getting get your name out there and uh, and, and making sure teams see what you can do. Because, you know, especially offensively, you can definitely – you could definitely stroke it, you know, you, you, you score, you can do a lot of things offensively. So what are the things, what are the things are you working on most to, to, to improve your game? I'm just staying tight, man. I'm just, uh, you know, constantly keep working on my jump shot, working on floaters, working off just like better reads. I've been watching tons of film and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, man, I'm just staying focused and staying prepared, man. Just, uh, working on floaters, you know. Uh, I've, you know, I've been really watching a whole, a whole bunch of film, like a whole bunch of film. You know, just trying to see where I can get better at and things like that. Yes. Yeah, so, what's your daily routine now? Uh, well, so Monday and Friday, I wake up every day at uh, uh, eight thirty. You know, I get to the gym by nine, and I just uh, try to uh, try to put up like four hundred shots, and you know, uh, um, you know, tons of jump rope and. You know, tons of rim finishes and stuff like that. So, okay. yeah, that's about my daily routine. Nice, nice, nice. And what you found a gym or something? Because I know a lot of a lot of places are locked up. All, all these YMCA's and all these local gyms. Do you find you go, you go outside to the parks or stuff? No, I, I mean I started off. I started off working outside, but and then I came to an agreement with my high school principal. You know, to let me work out nine through um to eleven um on okay. Mondays through uh, Fridays. Okay, that's cool. That's dope that they let you do that. You know, get to work on your yeah. game. That's definitely cool. So, you know, what do you want teams to know about you? What do you what What can you bring to a team if you're talking to a GM or whoever's in charge and, and they they're talking to you and they want to know? Okay, what can you bring to a team that's going to help contribute? What What, what are you going to tell them? Man, something I can bring to a team, man. I can bring leadership. You know, scoring. You know, um, you know they go get a good teammate. You know, uh, somebody that's willing to bring a championship to the program, that's willing to go with anybody. I'm not scared of nobody, you know. So, and uh, and I'm and I'm I'm willing to step into any role that they need me. You know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to bring to a team, and you know, um, yeah, man. I just feel like you know I'm always the best player out there. You know, uh, I you know I play with you know just confidence. You know, my confidence is out the yeah, roof. So, sure. yeah, yeah. You know, you know they you know they definitely get a uh, you know a hard work. Awesome. Yep, that's for sure. Uh, so, what what, got, what players in, in the league do you try to you know do you try to uh, your game emulate? You know, does it so is there anyone in the league that you try to pattern your game after? Yeah, I, uh, I watch a lot of uh, Kimball Walker and I watch a lot of Kyrie Irving and Damian uh, Lillard. 
Yeah, you yeah. know, so you know, uh, to just try to you know just learn things from him and stuff like that daily. Okay, and so who's who's your guys in the league? Who do you who do you love watching in the league? Uh, well, I'm definitely a LeBron fan, but uh, oh, okay, I'm definitely a huge LeBron fan. But man, I always um, you know, like guard wise, I watch those uh, you know those guys I just told you, you know, to try to just you know just see how they just get things done at my position. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, you like LeBron. LeBron's definitely, you know. Have you ever gotten those debates with, you know, LeBron versus Jordan? Do you ever? You oh know? man, all the time, <laughs> all the crazy. time. That's crazy, especially after this document. Did you watch the documentary? Uh, no, uh, I'm gonna watch it um soon. I didn't uh, start watching it yet. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely some crazy stuff in there that you're gonna be like, wow, it, it's crazy how they played back in the, in back in the day, you know. Did you finish it? Yeah, I watched it. I watched it. It's wild. This the stuff that that you know, Scotty Pippen's, you know, you know, all his stuff, and, and this Dennis Rodman being Dennis Rodman. <laughs> it, it's definitely right. it's definitely a documentary that's that's definitely a, a, a must watch for sure. That you definitely right, I'm a de- definitely go to. I'm gonna definitely have to check it out then. Yeah. So, who was your favorite player growing up? Um. My favorite player growing up, I liked the Dwayne Wade a lot. I love the Dwayne Wade game, you know, um, you know, it, um, you know, especially when he was with uh the Miami Heat with Shaq and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you know, and then that's when I started growing towards uh LeBron and you know uh, things like that. So okay, okay, cool. All right, so before I let you go, I just want to ask you a few quick questions, okay? Okay. All right. So when is the when was the first time you dunked? The first time I dunked, I think I was a I was a sophomore. I was in the gym with everybody, and I caught like alley oop, like uh, like right above the rim. It took me like a, it took me like ten tries to do it, man. But you know, I you know, uh, I I definitely got it done. Okay, what was the most points you scored in the game? Well, the most points I, the most points I scored in the game was fifty five. Fifty five. Yeah, yeah, I scored (laughs) fifty. I scored fifty five my uh my uh my uh junior year against this school called Fall Creek, but the most impressive I had fifty one against Lalamere when they was like fifty like when they when they when when they was like six in the country or something like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was, yeah, that was definitely like the most impressive. So uh who's the biggest Illinois legend, basketball legend out there? Uh Mm. Like as far as you know, whether it was that high school, who's the biggest? I know you got D Rose, you got a whole bunch of guys, a lot of a lot of uh, Chicago, Illinois guys out there. You know who's the but who's who's the who's the top of the top? Uh, they well well you know I'm from Indiana, but they talk about some dude named Benji Wilson or something yeah, like that. Anyway, so. Yeah, yeah, his story is crazy yeah. too. Yeah, that's that's you know it's sad what happened, but that his story. He was a he has a documentary, right. yeah, and his story is crazy though. But he was a hooper though. He was definitely a hooper. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they say he like a legend around here. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. So last, who who's your Mount Rushmore? Who's your Mount Rushmore NBA players? Uh, what's that? Top four? Top, yeah, you gotta get four. Uh, you want to go by order? Whatever you want, doesn't matter. Okay, you don't have to be order. Uh, Just who, who's your four? Okay, I got LeBron. LeBron. I I got LeBron. Then I got Mike. Mike. Then I got Kobe, Kobe, and then I got Magic. Magic, that's that's yeah. a good four. that's my four too. So, <laughs> you know, so we we got something similar. We got some great minds think alike. <laughs> yes, sir. But uh, for you, G, my man, this was a pleasure ha- ha- uh, coming on the show. I really appreciate you coming on. Your stories is a, is a tremendous story. You know, you know, you showed a lot of uh, you know, a lot of grip. You know going through everything you went in, in your career. So I really appreciate you coming on, and I'm rooting for you big time to, to hopefully hear your name draft day. I know that's going to be a, a special day for you. Oh, yes, sir. No doubt about it. Appreciate you for having me. No doubt, man. You know, uh, I'll make sure to put, you know, make sure to follow Eugene on, on Twitter and stuff. And, and, you know, like I said, you know, uh, rooting for him big time. And uh, I'll definitely uh, I have the show up later. And, uh, you know, like I said, man, uh, be safe out there, you know, with everything going on. It's crazy out here. Be safe and all that. And just, you know, take care, man. All right? Yes, sir. Appreciate it. All right, man. All right.